Hi, I'm Brian McDonald, editor with O'Reilly Media. I'm here with Chris Wilson, developer advocate with Google, and we're talking about audio and video features in HTML5. Thanks for being with me today. Thanks for having me. Um, I'm really excited about the accessibility features that go along mm -hmm. with the video mm -hmm. in HTML5. Can you tell me a little bit about that? So, you know, HTML5, one of the great things that the, the actual HTML5 spec adds is a tag for video and a tag for audio. And browsers, at this point, they're already supporting these features. Like all the major browsers um, already support the, the elements themselves. And the great thing about it is because you know video is a video element, it's not some arbitrary object that's embedded in a page, you can have specific features that are targeted towards video. Right. So you can do things like associate um, text tracks with it and uh, timed text tracks, more importantly, web BTT tracks. And these tracks let you basically have captions associated with the video or even other cues. They don't need to be textual, like caption-based stuff. They can be things like um, you know, metadata indicators or latitude and longitude coordinates if you're recording you know, movement around somewhere in a video or something right. like that. So it opens up all these possibilities that are, a lot of them are around accessibility. And of course, accessibility also opens up things like searchability, indexability. Right. You, know, you can index to a part of a video. If you can go look up the textual content, you can jump straight to that part of the video automatically. And this is something we did for like all of the talks that we do um, at Google I.O. Particularly, we index, like we, we caption all of them. And then we can index them very easily. Anything that's in that's captioned, we can index if it has time text tracks to it, right. and jump straight to that part, which is really kind of cool. I mean, it, it opens up a lot of possibilities, and that makes video searchable in a way that it never was exactly. before. Exactly, exactly. Very exciting. Um, and you were saying that with this indexability, you can manipulate the video within JavaScript. So inside JavaScript, you have a bunch of features. Well, you have a bunch of, of ways to control the video elements. You can do the obvious things like playing and pausing. You can seek to different parts of the video. You can control playback rate was one of the amazing things to me. You can, you can speed up or slow down playback. And interestingly enough, browsers like pitch shift the audio so that it stays constant. Huh. It do, it's really kind of amazing what's built in there. Um, but it also uh, it, it has some ad advanced features beyond that, too inside um, the video element that lets you do things like in later versions of Chrome, you can do um, alpha blending compositing. You, know, you can have an alpha channel in video as well right. as in, in static images, which is kind of cool. Oh. Where do you see that going? I think that you know, it's going to be a while until the HTML platform, the, the web platform, really has the level of um, you know, replacing a video editing piece right. of software. You know, that's that's really there's a lot that goes on in that. But that is ultimately the goal is to to work our way towards that in the same way that we've been working our way towards that in audio. And I think right. audio is a little bit easier. There's a little bit less information that's getting pumped through the channel and the processing is a little more straightforward. But they actually do share a lot of things too and in, in how the processing works. So I think that um, Eventually, I don't see why the web platform wouldn't be a place you can do real video editing and you know, wow. manipulation and things like that. So if there wasn't enough stuff on YouTube already, it'll be in everybody's there reach. There definitely will be. Yes. <laughs> yeah. um, let's talk about WebRTC for a minute, because mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned that. So that's obviously a whole level beyond just audio and video. Definitely. So WebRTC is really more about, um, well, it's really multiple things. It's the, the process of figuring out how to set up a connection between two different computers that are somewhere on the internet. Right. You know, the, the naive sort of layperson's view is just there's one big internet and it's all connected and everybody has, a, you know, has an identifier. But it's a lot more complex than that, of course. Right. And you have to navigate things like network firewalls in order to get from one computer to another. So making a peer-to-peer -peer connection can actually be pretty challenging. Like I, I demonstrate this feature a lot, WebRTC a lot, using my cell phone, which is you know, on a cellular network, right. and my laptop, which is usually connected to you know, conference Wi-Fi or something like that. And um, you know, if you look at where the packets actually go, it's going quite a long way away you right. know, in terms of network topology. So part of WebRTC is navigating that. Part of it is negotiating between devices. Well, 
what resolution can you support? You know, if you're a, a low resolution smartphone, you probably don't want a full HD signal going back and forth and things like that. You know, what sort of codec do you support and that kind of thing. Then there's just the process of getting a stream of data on that device, you know, mm -hmm. getting access to a feed off of the, the webcam on your laptop or uh, you know, the front-facing camera on your, your cell phone or whatever. Um, and then you know, connecting that up, just plugging it straight into the RTC connection and saying, transfer this back and forth for me. And the great thing is, it's almost that easy with WebRTC. Like mm. the, the signaling part to, to set up the connection can be fairly complex depending on what you're trying to support. But once you get it all connected, you know, transferring a video feed is actually really mind-bogglingly easy to do. That's impressive. Really, really kind of cool. Even cooler than that is, um, at the same time, you can use it to transfer arbitrary data. Right. And the, the, um, the RTC data channel API for this looks just like WebSockets. So if you've already mm -hmm. been doing socket level programming, you can easily do that, you know, easily transfer that same knowledge, that same code even, to WebRTC and get it to work over this RTC connection. And one step beyond that, my favorite feature of this whole thing is that um, you can, in WebRTC, in the data channel, you can use UDP, which okay. is a different kind of network transport layer. Um, and the only thing that's interesting about it is it's potentially lossy, like the packets can get lost. Mm -hmm but it's faster, it has lower latency, so you can get data across the channel even faster and do things like musically useful um, uh, collaboration. And one of the oh. problems with TCP IP and Wi-Fi is that if I try to send notes to my buddy, you know, I'm trying to like jam with him over the, the network, it's just a little bit too slow, like there's enough of a lag to, right. be, to, to be distracting. And you can get rid of that if you use UDP. That's exciting. And, uh, so this data exchange also extends to games? Absolutely. I think one of the, the primary uses of it will be games. It'll be an easy way to set up uh, a peer-to-peer -peer connection for transferring game data back and forth. That's going to be exciting. It seems like um, there's an awful lot to look forward to right now. Absolutely. You know, I'm, I've, every, uh, I've been working on the web platform for a long time. I think uh, more than two decades at this point. And every time I think, wow, it's a pretty impressive platform, but we're sort of plateaued, um, a, whole new, a whole new area gets opened up. And I think that's pretty amazing. I think we've got a lot to look forward to. Great. Well, thanks very much for your time, Chris. Cool. Thanks, Brian. Thank you.